Welcome to this course on business development and sales. And I'd like to start by asking this key question, who needs business development? First of all, let me say welcome to the course. It's great to have you on board. My name is John Colley, and I'm going to be talking to you in this course all about how to win at business development and sales. Now, is it a struggle for you? Are you struggling to grow your business? Do you want a business development role, but you've got no idea where to start? Do you need to kickstart the sales in your business? Do you want to be successful, but you don't understand where you're going wrong with your business development work? Are you getting exasperated? You may already know you have a problem. You may be saying, I need help. I just wish I could have a mentor to help me with my business development and sales. I wish someone could show me how to really turn up the, the volume of new clients and sales. Well, let me tell you, in order to do this, you've got to have a game plan. And I want you to discover my game plan in this course, because I'm going to show you how to organize your business development and sales into a streamlined system, a system that you can share with your whole team, that you can share with your whole company. Now, this is my system. I've been an investment banker for over 27 years. And over that time, I've devised and refined this system. I've trained dozens of uh, investment banking colleagues to help them to be more successful with their BD work. And I've created millions of dollars in deals in Europe, in the US and in Asia. And I'm here to share all of this with you step by step. Now, the main benefit of this course is you don't have to spend 25 years, 27 years of trial and error. You can hit the ground running with a step-by-step -step business development and sales program. You can immediately accelerate your sales today. Business development doesn't have to be this huge mountain you have to climb. With my help, I will show you how to make it part of your daily business. It'll be a challenge, certainly, but when you implement what I'm going to show you, you will have a game plan to win as well. So who needs business development? I never hear anyone say, I don't need any more customers. I don't need any more sales. They almost always say, I wish I had discovered this ages ago. Well, let's get started. I look forward to working with you through this business development and sales course, and I wish you enormous success with your business. Welcome to this course on business development and sales. And I'd like to start by asking this key question, who needs business development? First of all, let me say welcome to the course. It's great to have you on board. My name is John Colley, and I'm going to be talking to you in this course all about how to win at business development and sales. Now, is it a struggle for you? Are you struggling to grow your business? Do you want a business development role, but you've got no idea where to start? Do you need to kickstart the sales in your business? Do you want to be successful, but you don't understand where you're going wrong with your business development work? Are you getting exasperated? You may already know you have a problem. You may be saying, I need help. I just wish I could have a mentor to help me with my business development and sales. I wish someone could show me how to really turn up the, the volume of new clients and sales. Well, let me tell you, in order to do this, you've got to have a game plan. And I want you to discover my game plan in this course, because I'm going to show you how to organize your business development and sales into a streamlined system, a system that you can share with your whole team, that you can share with your whole company. Now, this is my system. I've been an investment banker for over 27 years. And over that time, I've devised and refined this system. I've trained dozens of uh, investment banking colleagues to help them to be more successful with their BD work. And I've created millions of dollars in deals in Europe, in the US and in Asia. And I'm here to share all of this with you step by step. Now, the main benefit of this course is you don't have to spend 25 years, 27 years of trial and error. You can hit the ground running with a step-by-step -step business development and sales program. You can immediately accelerate your sales today. Business development doesn't have to be 
this huge mountain you have to climb. With my help, I will show you how to make it part of your daily business. It'll be a challenge, certainly, but when you implement what I'm going to show you, you will have a game plan to win as well. So, who needs business development? I never hear anyone say, I don't need any more customers. I don't need any more sales. They almost always say, I wish I had discovered this ages ago. Well, let's get started. I look forward to working with you through this business development and sales course, and I wish you enormous success with your business. In this video, I want to talk to you about why this course is important to your business. I want to give you six reasons why you should think very seriously about the content of this course, because it is critical to the success of your business. The first point I want to make is that having a structured and well-organized sales process, you will be able to increase your ability to generate revenue for your business. This doesn't happen by accident. You have to work at it. You have to have a system. The next thing I want you to think about is I want you to be more effective. I want you to spend your time in a much more constructive way. And if you can harness the power of everybody in your team to pull in the same direction in a coordinated manner, then you are going to be much more effective at sales. At a very basic level, I just want to improve your marketing skills. I want to teach you ways to do things which are quick and effective and will actually get you to where you want to be, which is in front of the client, making the pitch, convincing them to buy from you and closing the deal. Now, critically, we all make mistakes, but the biggest area that people make mistakes in is when they don't know what they're doing. The biggest pe weakness people have is not knowing what they don't know. And when I started this out, when I came out of the army and I first went into uh, the world of business in corporate finance in the city, I couldn't sell my way out of a paper bag because nobody had taught me anything about selling. And it's only after doing it for 25 years that I've actually learned that there is a process and a system. And if I can help you to avoid some of those really basic mistakes, then I'm going to save you a lot of time and I'm going to help you to make a lot more money efficiency and time efficiency is critical to all our businesses we do not be want to be wasting time on what doesn't work we want to be focusing all our time and effort to make sure that we do things which are going to be productive and this course will certainly help you with that and finally of course we want to increase our win rate because you can spend an awful lot of time pitching for deals but the difference between winning and losing is really really small but if you can just tip a little bit, then your win rate's going to go up. And one of the biggest issues on that is not wasting your time working on deals when you're not going to make any money. So this is really, really important. And count, you know, watching your win rate and watching how many pitches you make and how many you win is a really serious component of your business, which you need to be aware of. So that's it. I hopefully have convinced you in this uh, lecture why this course is important to your business. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly in another video. In this video, I want to explain to you the six key steps to selling success. Okay, we're getting into the meat of the, the course now, which is great. And what this lecture is going to do is it's going to set out to you the six steps, which are basically the overall structure of the course, so that you've got some idea of the framework that we're following. The first point is all about preparation. It's absolutely essential that you do your homework on the whole sector and business that you want to be selling in. So it's not good enough just to turn up uh, on your first day and say, oh yeah, okay, I can make some calls, I can get going, I can start selling. You really do need to get yourself grounded in the business and understand the market you're selling to. Then it's all about getting the first meeting. 
And this is the biggest hurdle you're going to overcome because once you're through the door, then you're in a position to, to influence the process and to have any, an engaged discussion with the potential client. But getting past that hurdle is the most difficult. So we're going to cover some really very objective and carefully thought through strategies to make sure that we can get that first meeting. One of the biggest problems you're going to overcome or have to overcome throughout this whole process is overcoming objections. There's a lot of overcoming going on. And therefore, it's important that we look at this and you are prepared for it in advance because you don't want to be caught on the back foot. And if somebody raises an objection, you do need to have your answer prepared to it. And we'll cover some of the most common objections that people raise. Then we get to the first meeting, and this is critical. Now, in a sense, every meeting is a pitch, but you don't expect to close the deal on the first meeting. But you do have to make a really positive and significant impression if you're going to get a second meeting. So we'll talk through the first meeting in some detail. Once you've had that first meeting, you need to decide whether this is a piece of business you want to keep pursuing, because you can waste an awful lot of time chasing deals which are never going to close. So I want to take you through some of the thought process you have to go through to make sure you don't make that critical mistake. Because you can have a whole pipeline full of lots of potential ideas, but if none of them close, you're not going to make any money. And then finally, we get to the pitch. The main point of the whole deal, which is where you actually pitch your deal, you make your formal proposal, and then after that, we need to follow that up and close the deal. So in a sense, there's a most important phase because you actually finally get to the point where you're selling to the client who wants to buy something from you and you get that deal signed and you finally make the, you know, make the deal pay for you. So really important phase and not to be underestimated. So that's the framework for this, uh, this whole course and lecture, the six key steps to selling success. I hope you found that very helpful. I'll see you again very shortly in the next lecture. In this video, I want to set out the plan of our sales campaign. Now, We've spoken in the previous lecture about the six steps, the six key steps to selling success. And that was in itself the framework of this uh, whole course. In this lecture, I want to take a slightly different look at it because I want to look at it not in terms of the structure of the course, but I want to look at it in terms of the phases you're going to have to go through in your selling campaign to get to a closed deal. Now, the old adage, time spent in reconnaissance is seldom wasted, is so true in the sales game. You really do need to have yourself prepared. And therefore, the first phase is all about preparation. And we're going to go into this in quite some detail. But you really are going to have to understand who your targets are, understand the landscape of the whole industry you're operating in, understand who's going to be buying from whom, who's already bought from whom, who your competitors are. And once you've got that holistic view of the market you're selling in, then you can start to identify who are potential prospects and who are key and important potential clients that you really want to target. But you do need to have that overview in your mind. You can't simply pull names off a list and off a hat and just go and give them a call and say, hey, I want to flog you something. Are you interested? In the second phase, it's all about identifying the major clients that you want to target as potential opportunities. Now, it's just as difficult to sell a deal to a small client as it is to a big client. So it makes a lot of sense to identify the larger size opportunities and go for those ahead of the smaller deals. So you do need to start by looking who the bigger companies are that you might be dealing with. Phase two is all about follow-up meetings and really honing in on the targets that you want to close. So you're eliminating from your, uh, your pipeline the potential uh, customers and really focusing in on the ones where there's real business to be done and you believe there's a high probability of success and closure. The final phase is all about engagement getting stuck in with a potential client, 
getting some sort of deal agreed and closing it and signing it and earning the money. So those are the, the business phases, if you like, rather than the lecture structure phases that I want you to be thinking about as you go through this process. And the whole idea of doing this is that you start off with a very large number of potential targets at the beginning and you end up concentrating your efforts on the very limited number of real deal opportunities that you're going to close. And by eliminating all those surplus ones on the way through, you'll save yourself an awful lot of time and you'll increase the probability that you'll be successful. So that's it for this video, setting out our plan of campaign. I hope you found that helpful and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly in another video. In this video, I want to set some internal and external very specific objectives. We're going to start with the internal objectives. Now, what you need to do is to agree either with your direct report, your boss, or with your team, the people who are reporting to you, the three specific objectives that you need to achieve at this stage in the game. First of all, you need to agree your client priority lists. So as part of your preparation phase, which we'll look at in the next section of this course, you'll need to put together an agreed list of potential priority clients who you are going to start to target. Now, at the same time, I want to put some sort of um, goal around this in monetary terms. So I want you to be setting and agreeing some agreed annual revenue targets that you're going to derive from this sales activity. So not only do we have a group of clients who we want to to target us and, and do business with, but we also want to have some idea in financial terms of what the end result of that is going to be. Now, you need to agree this both from the bottom up and the top down. Let me explain what I mean. When you're doing your client priority you know, um, list and working out who your priority clients are going to be, you need to work out how much revenue you think you can get from each of those clients and see what sort of number you've got there. At the same time, you need to be looking at the sorts of deals you need to be winning for your firm and what sort of revenue you expect to be getting from those deals. And you need to make sure that the two approaches match each other because there's no point in having a specific goal from your business and then working with a list of priority clients where the deal flow that you're expecting in whatever form is not going to meet the internal goals of the business. So you have to go top down and bottom up and make sure that they, they make sense together. Now, externally, I've got two specific objectives. The first of these is you need to get to know the key decision makers and whatever directors, and I put stars there deliberately because they might not be the managing director, they might be the sales director, they might be the marketing director, they might be the operating director, whatever your business is in. But you need to get to know the key decision makers in your large cap and your priority clients. So once you've established who those, who those potential clients are, you need to start attacking the, 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 the personnel that you need to get to know and you need to start engaging with them. And the objective of that engagement is to understand their strategy and their objectives firsthand. And when I talk about that, I'm talking about not just the, the overall business of their, their, their overall strategy for their business, but I'm also talking about their own personal goals, their agenda, because what you want to do is you want them to be successful, because if they're successful, then they'll help you to be successful. So you need to understand their strategy and their objectives, and that's their business and their personal strategies and objectives. I hope I've got that point across. So that's it for this video internal and external objectives. I hope you understand now what they are and why they're so important. And I'll see you again very shortly in the next video. In this video, I want to have a quiet word with you and ask you to remember a key point in this whole process. Who pays you. 
Now, I, your circumstances will vary, and I understand that. You might be a single consultant. You might be an employee in a firm. You might be a business owner. And depending on who you are, you need to keep focus on who is promoting your paycheck, who is actually paying you. Now, it might be your managing director. It might be your employer in some form. It's probably going to be directly or indirectly your clients. And that's the key point you need to, to keep focused on. It doesn't matter whether you are in the game simply to get your salary check every day or whether you own your own business or you're a, a one man consultant. At the end of the day, if your clients don't pay you for your business services and your work, then ultimately your business or your employer won't either because either your business will shut down or your employer will sack you. So you've really got to keep focused on the fact that your ultimate paycheck comes every day from your clients. And that's why they're so important. And allied to that is the bonus, which is why I said you didn't get a bonus. Well, maybe you lost sight of the importance of really working through a tightly organized sales process to make sure that you got paid because you made deals and you got business done. So it's a really important thing to concentrate on and have in the back of your mind. Just wanted to bring it up, but I, it's such an important point. We all can't afford to forget it. So that's it for this video. Just remember who pays you. And I'll see you again very shortly in another video. In this video, I want to recap what we've covered in this section, which has been all about setting priorities and objectives. In the first video in this section, we talked about why this is important for your business. And I explained to you it's because you want to, we want to increase our ability to generate revenue. We want to be more effective at sales. We want to improve our marketing skills. We want to avoid selling mistakes. We want to use our time more efficiently. And critically, we want to increase our win rate. So I hope you really got that message that, that this course can achieve that for your business. Then I explain to you the six steps that this course will take you through. And we're in the first step in a sense because we're setting our objectives. But the next step we're gonna look at is preparation, then we're going to talk about getting to the first meeting. We'll take a detailed look at overcoming objections. Then we'll go into the first meeting and how to handle that in some detail. How to then qualify opportunities. And then finally, the pitch and post pitch follow up, which then leads to the close. Then I talk to you about setting out our plan of campaign. Remember, time spent in reconnaissance and seldom wasted, which is why the preparation phase is so important. But this is really about explaining to you what the real life marketing process is all about. And that's really preparation, then doing your marketing, then having follow up meetings and really engaging with targets and then taking that engagement and then winning and closing deals. So that's that's an overview, if you like, of the real life process. Whereas in the previous lecture, we had looked at what the, uh, the way I'd structured this course and laid it out for you. So I hope you understand the difference between the two. Then I talked to you about your internal and external objectives and why it was important to get your your internal team or your, your buy-in from your boss uh, on your priority lists, on your revenue targets, and making sure that you top down and bottom up to them so you made sure that they, the two would meet, so that the targets you were actually going to tackle were going to deliver the numbers that your business wants you to generate. Externally, it's all about getting to know the key decision makers and understanding what they want to achieve and what will make them successful. And those are your very specific external objectives. And everything else is superfluous to those two points. And then in the last lecture, I raised the little phantom of who pays you. And I do really want you to remember this. OK, it's not just your managing director or your employer. It's actually, at the end of the day, it's your clients. 
And if you don't deliver with them, then that bonus ain't going to happen. So it's having that mental mindset. You're not just a salaryman picking up your cheque. Obviously, if it's your own business, then you need to get this ethos across to your team. And if you're a one man consultant, I'm sure you already appreciate that, you know, the bread and butter is provided by the client. An important lesson nonetheless. So that's it for the recap. I hope you found that helpful and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly in another video.